Welcome back to Discover Inclusion's YouTube channel. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. And if you enjoy this video, please drop a like at the end. It really helps us get out to as many people as possible. Today, we're going to be looking at some ways to make art lessons more accessible. So whether this is changing a lesson that you're already doing or um, creating a new lesson so that more of your students can access it, uh, we want to make sure that art is available to every student, every child. It's one of the most accessible lessons. It doesn't require any level of learning already. It doesn't require a high level of cognitive function. And so it really opens up the doors to a wide variety of children, young people and adults um, by giving them access to creating something of their own. Some of the methods we're going to look at today involves the adult or the supporting worker doing something first and then bringing, presenting this to the child to do their work on. Other bits might require some support from the adult whilst the child is or the pupil is doing their work. We want to make as much of the process as open to these children and young people as possible, but we also want to make sure that they go home with something that they can feel happy with or proud of. Far too often I'm seeing students being sent home with artwork that they clearly didn't do themselves. This is really disappointing because as we've said, art is so accessible and there's so many different ways that we can go about it. Hopefully within this video, we'll show you some ideas that you can get started with in your classroom in September or this summer with your children at home. As we look through these different ideas, there's going to be things that are good for your students and there's going to be things that aren't so much. So I will try and split the activities into story sections on YouTube. The first activity we're going to do is using lots of different coloured tapes. So I've only got miniature ones, um, as you can see here, uh, but you can get tapes of all sorts of different colours that come in full size and that can fit onto your sellotape holders. So all the child has to do is pull and rip them off. I will only be using the small ones because that's what I've got available in my house at the moment. What you might want to do to be able to create a more exciting or interesting picture is to draw lines across the page or to create an image that your child can use the tape to colour in as such instead of painting or colouring with a traditional paintbrush or pencil. The next activity we're going to look at is using crayons or wax to create an art piece, put some lines down on your card or your paper. And then when you paint over it, the paint is rejected by the crayon. Um, and so it creates a cool pattern where you've got the colorful paint on top of what is potentially a clear or a light colored crayon in the background. It's a perfect use for those white crayons that you never seem to find useful. You might want to draw the patterns ahead of time or attach the crayon onto something bigger like um, a fork or knife so that the child can hold on to it, whether you've got adapted instruments that you might be able to attach the crayon to to make it more accessible for them to draw those lines themselves. And the same with the paintbrush, what can you attach it to to make it easier for them to paint over on top? Another activity we can do is painting with our hands. I know it's a really messy activity, but so many children really enjoy it. And it's just one way of encouraging them to use their fine motor skills without trying to pick up pencils and pens and paintbrushes, but they get to express themselves. Whether they're doing finger paintings with just one uh, finger, whether they're using their whole hand and splatting it onto the page and creating an outline that might turn into a hedgehog um, or a fish. It's completely up to you on the direction the lesson goes in. It's completely up to you on how the lesson goes, whether they just take paint and you're outside and they smear it all over a giant white sheet. Some children might even enjoy taking their socks off and putting the paint on their feet and walking or running across the um, paper or the sheet themselves. 
if you've got children in wheelchairs it's a good thing to check first whether it's possible to clean their wheelchairs of paint but one option is to put paint so that they can roll their wheelchairs through the paint um, and across the sheet or across the piece of paper but again please make sure you find out if it's possible to clean their wheelchair appropriately before you let them do this before you even approach the subject with them something else you can do is get rolling rollers um, for uh, painting walls and put paint on those it's much easier to control that than it is to control a small paintbrush Whilst we've got our paint out, there's a couple of other things we can do if our children don't enjoy having paint on their fingers or on their hands. Can we get some plastic toys and dip them into the paint to walk across the page? Or using a car or a train, we can roll them in the paint, which can then be transferred as tracks onto the page. The next activity is really exciting because it uses something a lot of us use as a sensory um, technique anyway, which is bubbles. So what you're going to need for this one is something to mix your bubble mixture in. Uh, some way of blowing the bubbles. I've just got one of the little plastic uh, pieces that comes in a pot of bubbles. Food colouring and washing up liquid. When you're making the mixture, you're looking for about one part washing up liquid to two parts water, plus a little bit of liquid food colouring. It's better to use the liquid um, just because it mixes in for the bubbles better. It can be done with powder or gel. Excuse my cat in the background. So I've put a small amount of water in the bottom of my cup and then I'm going to put about half as much uh, washing up liquid in. If it doesn't appear to be making bubbles straight away, just add in a little bit more washing up liquid. It might need to be thickened. You can then take your bubble mixture and grab your bubble maker. Or if you've got a bubble machine, then you can use that and pour in your bubble mixture. I take no responsibility if any bubble machines break in the process. Um, but you can then put this onto uh, or blow the bubbles onto a white sheet or a white piece of paper and as they pop it will create a pattern. Lots of us really enjoy making firework decorations with our old toilet rolls. So what can we do to make this more accessible? Because for a lot of children, this isn't a very big surface area to hold and makes it quite difficult because of how short it is. But also it might squish as they use their pressure um, or their limited uh, capability to control the pressure they're using on their hands to hold the toilet roll. So let's look at a couple of options. The first thing we can do is tape something like a spoon, a wooden spoon or another piece of wooden, wooden piece of cutlery onto the toilet roll, which they can then hold. And it's something that they're used to holding, which might make it a little bit easier. Another thing we can do is attach it to the end of a rolling pin or um, a the longer um, rolls that we get on things like cling film or tin foil. This way it's a much sturdier thing for them to hold, it's a lot bigger, gives the option of using two hands and for those children that aren't able to get as close to the table or if you're working on a wall, they're still able to join in with that limited mobility or that limited access that we may be able to provide them. We've done a video before on sensory bags, so getting a Ziploc bag of any kind and filling it with, in some cases, paint, which I've just had someone show me some amazing work some of their students have been doing. Um, I'll link the video about sensory bags up here. Um, and we can also put in different textures into sensory bags. So children that are sensory averse and don't enjoy getting that paint on their hands might be able to have a go well, using their movement across the top of a sensory bag to mix the paint and create a background for an image that you can draw onto the top of the Ziploc bag. With some children, 
if they're struggling with that sensory aversion, we can also have a go at using glue and confetti. So I've got some chopped up tissue paper here in blue and purple, and I'm going to take the glue and I can either pour it straight onto the paper, or I can get a paintbrush or a scoop and put that onto the paper that way, whichever way is most accessible for your students. And then we're gonna take the confetti and pour it all over the top, shaking out the piece of paper to remove any loose pieces. And there we've got our piece of artwork. Another activity we can do is taking advantage of string. So we can attach the string to absolutely anything, whether it's uh, hold them, the child holding it themselves, either with one hand or both hands, or onto objects that they can more easily grasp so that they can manipulate the string as they wish. You're then going to dip the string into your paint, probably slightly watered down paint, it'll make it a lot easier and encourage the child to drape the string or drop the string onto the piece of paper and press it down if they want to, or you can do that just to create the imprint a little bit stronger. Then when you take the string off of the piece of paper, you're going to have a printed page of something of their creation. The last one we're going to look at today is using an ETRAN frame or an eye gaze to colour select. Um, I'm not going to keep it in front of my face because it makes the sound uh, sound really strange. Um, so we can choose the different colours of the paint and then we're going to take a cardboard frame and some cling film and use the child or the young person's gaze to direct where we put that paintbrush. So here is my piece of card with a big hole cut out in the centre. You can change the shape of the hole if that's something you're interested in doing and if you have better skills with a pair of scissors than I do. Uh, and then you want to cover the front with cling film and sellotape it to the back. You'll want to keep your cling film handy so that once you've finished your painting with your child you can cover the back with cling film and seal it off with the sellotape. Uh, once it's dried a little bit to preserve their piece of art for longer. So as I don't have someone here to use as my student, um, we're going to go with the colours blue, pink and orange. So in your case, these are going to be the colours that your student has chosen using their e-tran or their eye gaze device. We're then going to hold up our uh, card sheet. Uh, it is easier if you can use something like a cardboard box as it supports it a lot better. Um, I don't have one accessible to me at the moment so this is what we're going to go with. So I'm then going to choose the first colour that was selected and hold the frame in front of my face and follow the student's eyes to match what they're doing with their eyes to what I'm painting on the, on the sheet. If your student uses an eye gaze or an e-tran on a regular basis, you'll probably have a focus point where they can go back to. This might be the point where you change the colour and they get to restart. It's good to talk to your student beforehand and explain where you're going to start with the paintbrush or how you're going to make these decisions so that you're doing a piece of artwork that is controlled by them and not by what you want to do or what you think they want you to do. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do drop a like if you found it useful and don't hesitate to share with friends, family, uh, other members, colleagues, other members of your school if you think it could be beneficial to them. Thanks for watching.